Hello, let's look at a hands on demo session. We'll be creating a real time chat application using socket.io. So, the major sections of the chat application would be like this. So, we will install Babel packages so that the application can support ES6 syntax. Babel would transpile the ES6 syntax to ES5 syntax. We will create a start.js file install all the required packages the socket.io and the express packages we'll start the server create the html form the forms would be used to basic forms for chatting or sending messages we will connect the application in html file so write some javascript code so that our html file can send messages receive messages which are being sent and received using socket.io Configure socket.io on both client and server side. So socket.io library, again, since it's a chat application, it has to be present on both client and the server. Configure the HTML page to emit the message. Emit message meaning send the message. And uh, check the working of the application. So we will be creating the chat application using ES6 template. So let us first configure Babel environment. So let's initialize a npm application and install all the required uh, Babel modules, Babel core, Babel preset environment, Babel register and Babel polyfill. Let's open that directory in Visual Studio code. Let's open the terminal. Let's start with installing the Babel packages. I'll install them one by one. There are times when you try to install all of them together, you might face some errors. It might happen. To be on safer side, I am installing them one by one. So that is Babel core first then babel preset environment babel register and babel polyfill babel preset environment babel register and babel polyfill also when you're installing packages so the famous packages that you use that we're showing here the babel packages express socket io the famous packages usually don't have any problem they are maintained by many developers and sometimes even many companies but there are many packages which might be developed by small developers like you and me, individuals. They might not be maintaining it properly or the code might not be that accurate or might be having some other problems. So a new feature in the recent times that I've seen in NPM packages, once you install it, NPM also tells you the number of vulnerabilities found in the package. But let's say if you are using package that is not very popular, you see it has many vulnerabilities try and don't use that try to find a better safer package or more popular package that you can use in your application so we'll create the .babelrc file and uh, put in this code so we installed the packages we created the babelrc file now in start.js we'll import the babel register so and then we'll import the app the app.js and then export it so basically in start.js what we are saying is basically the whole app has to use babel or babel would transpile the whole app when we run it or when we create a build so let's do this for start.js let's indent it a little bit and always indent your code properly that's a good practice it's also good for other people in your team so this line babel register compiles file when loaded and uh, presets contains set of plugins to convert ES6 features to equivalent ES5. So Babel preset environment basically has, for example, arrow functions, you know, need to be converted into the normal function where you write the function keyword. So that's one example of where the ES6 syntax is converted to ES5. There can be the object destructuring where you use the three dots. So that needs to be transpiled. So there has to be equivalent syntax for that. So in that case, there is no equivalent syntax. I mean, for the arrow functions, we have the normal functions. So you can directly replace that syntax. But in object destructuring, we don't have equivalent syntax for that. So that there has to be some code to be able to do that. So there are a lot of ES6 features which are not there in ES5. So there has to be code, which kind of a fallback code that would uh, actually run that feature in ES5 as well. And we start the application code in app.js. Now let's go ahead and install the express and uh, socket.io as well. We install express. Let me just look at the name of the npm module. Is it socket.io or socket.io? Yeah, socket.io. Now 
in the app.js so we will import express and import socket io and basically start our server let's go ahead and do that the io object gives us the access to socket.io library so we can use the io object to do the socket io stuff that we want to do in our application and here we are configuring the port and make server listen to the port so we've also mentioned the port number that's so for us it will be double nine double zero if it's set in the environment variable it will take that one now in the public directory we will uh, create a simple index.html in the index.html so this will be user facing we'll import the socket.io client side library so we can directly use it from the socket.io's website also we will use jquery for you know, basic stuff the usual stuff setting values and events and stuff we'll uh, configure a button nickname i uh, used to set the user so right now for now we are like putting a simple text box and a button over here that will set the nickname so like username like who is chatting and uh, a chat box and a button to send the chat message let's do that before we create the public directory and uh, put in the index or html file let's set the express to use the public directory as a static directory so whatever is in the public directory is served statically nothing is processed on the server side let's create the index or html file now create the body copying the whole html that we have so this is basically bootstrap syntax so let me go ahead and copy the bootstrap css and js as well so we have loaded jquery before the bootstrap js you can even load jquery and the bootstrap javascript at the end of the body tag but it's okay for demo purposes also please load jquery before the bootstrap js version 3.4 yeah any version above 3 these days is good it's latest don't use the old versions the 1.8 or 2 unless you want to support really old browsers so we have the bootstrap library from bootstrap cdn it's good to use that cdn unless you have a really fast server so we have a simple page setup mainly we need to concentrate on this form form has the text box to set the nickname which we just talked about and a send chat message area now moving ahead so in the app.js file so we have set the public directory told express to use the public directory as a statically served directory so here one thing you need to understand socket so with express we create our http server to do all the http stuff you know serving the html css javascript file also node will do the any node js processing on the server side which needs to be done but when you're working on something like socket.io or let's say even web sockets there is a separate socket server so here we have a separate socket.io server so there will be actually two servers running one will be the http server and another will be the chat server or the socket server or the socket.io server to be exact in this case so we'll have to include this line in our app.js so we've done this in just one line what you could do is like this also it's up to you so this is like the basic form that we talked about the place to set the nickname and the area where you send the chat message the send chat message button now let's start with the socket.io stuff so first on the server side so we already started the socket.io server now handle the socket traffic to io.sockets.on connection set the nickname property of a given client sets io object to listen to each connection to your application so what happens is so we have one server the socket.io server now there can be n number of people chatting let's say there are three each one of them opens a browser and initiates a chat so let's say user one opens the browser our server is running types in the nickname and you know some message and, and clicks send so there will be a socket.io code on the browser also which will send a message to the server using the socket.io library and then this callback will be fired saying hey we have a new connection and uh, on the server side we will set a nickname this can be nickname or username anything but in our case we are using nickname so this is, will basically handle the incoming socket traffic and listen for uh, new connections 
so relay chat data to all clients so what we are building is a simple chat room so in a chat room as you know one person sending a message will be received by all the users in that chat room so socket dot on chat so these dot on dot on consider them similar to events that you've already used in javascript and those events have a callback so when a chat is received the callback is called we get the nickname of that person so if we don't have the nickname if there is an error or something like that we set the nickname to anonymous like hey we don't know who the user is in case something like that happens and then we using emit emit is something like broadcast you know you just broadcast a message and that will be received by all the users in the same socket connection or in the same chat room so we will create a payload object set the message property and the nickname property so when a user one sends a message the message is received by the user received by the server over here we will take the message take that person's nickname whoever is sending that message and then broadcast it to all the other users so sets your backend application to display user message on the screen so everybody in this chat room will receive this payload and here we are writing the client side code so this is in the browser the socket dot io code in the browser so first we create the socket object using io dot connect so once you have the socket dot io library imported so similar to jquery when you are importing jquery you have either the jquery with j small and q capital you either have the jquery or the dollar object available for you globally to work on it similarly for socket.io you will have the io object so you create the socket object using io.connect and similar to the server side code here we have socket.on chat and uh, nick was our the nickname button so when you click on that we set the nickname so we emit our nickname let's we'll again go to the server and get registered when you're sending a chat message so this was the chat button hash chat id chat so when the chat button is clicked we take the text from the chat text the box where you write the chat and you emit the chat so this will be received on the server where we wrote socket dot on chat so let's go ahead and implement this so where were we we've installed socket.io started the server we have a basic html form we started listening to socket.io okay we need to implement from this point now we have an idea of what we want to do let's start so we've created an array array of users we will keep a list of all the users that have connected to this socket io server we have the io.on connection so whenever we have a connection this callback is called let me import that socket we receive this socket object from the callback okay so for the new connection we have socket.on connect we get the new connection we'll be able to see this console log messages over here in our terminal typically in most of the cases when a user who is already connected in in the chat room when the browser closes automatically the socket connection closes and that's when the disconnect event is called and we get the callback we get to do our stuff we can remove the user from our list or you know maybe let's say we have a database where we maintain a list of users we can do that or maybe emit a message to all other users saying hey this guy left the, the chat room things like that so we have the nick event over here where we set the nickname also we push that user into our users list again every place we are doing console log for debugging so if you can see we have the emit in mostly all of the events so whenever a user is disconnected we emit so that all the users know that hey this guy left the chat room whenever the nickname is set so we have a new user and the nickname is set we emit the new user so all the users get the updated user list and whenever a chat is received we emit that chat so that it's sent to all the users so we already did this io.sockets.on connection we set the nickname chat now on the index or html side we need to set the we need to write the browser side code of socket io on the index or html okay so we have the socket object using the global io object similar to the server we have the on chat so the chat event the user list event here we are setting the click events 
so whenever a nickname is set or a chat is sent so on the client side the socket dot on a event name means something that is being received from the server whatever we are emitting we are emitting the user list we are emitting the chat so if you look at the emit functions we are emitting mainly two things either the user list or the chat so that is received on the browser side using socket dot on so whenever the user list is updated maybe on disconnect or a new user is connected and the we get the new nickname we emit the user list and we receive it over here like this or when the server emits a chat we get the chat over here like this and then we will update the text area that we have with the chat messages add a new line this is what the user would be taking the action so setting the nickname so nick dot on click and the user would emit the nickname which would be received by the server over here socket dot on nick so it's very simple you emit from the server on the browser side you have socket dot on to catch that event similarly when you can emit from the browser side and that would be received on the server side using socket dot on so in a way it's pretty simple to understand so we emit the nickname when it is set and this we are just keeping a flag for our small logic so if nickname is set we can just you know hide the button so the user is already in the chat room can't set his nickname again so a simple logic and the code to send the chat to the server sending a object with message property and then making the chat box value empty so what next so let's run this and see how it works we can do is we can open two windows so open a new incognito window so that will be like two separate browsers with two separate sessions we have a nice chat box okay so we'll set the nickname over here as user1 set nickname okay so we received the nickname over here as well since we started the application we are in the chat room but we don't have a nickname so what i mean by that is if you look at the app.js the incognito window the user is connected but the nickname is not set yet now let's set the nickname over here as well user2 perfect so active users we have two let's send a chat message hello from user1 and chat message okay which is received instantly at both places hello from user2 i think there's a small bug i pressed enter while i was typing the message so we received this event of setting the nickname might be a small bug but it doesn't crash the application so let's proceed so we have this working nice simple now let's try and close the incognito window user2 removed so the disconnect event was fired as soon as i closed the window but the messages remain we're not doing anything to them great we have this working nice and you can see the console log messages that we have everywhere setting the nickname the user list so this is the array again setting the second nickname user2 we have the new updated user list chat sent by user1 at this timestamp user1 saying hello from user1 so here is where i think i pressed enter and we got again so this might be some small bug ignore this for now uh, user2 sending the chat at this timestamp hello from user2 okay, disconnect user2 i close the window updated users we have the new user list only with one user so very simple but very effective very powerful so let's proceed i want to track the location of the user how should i implement it in order to determine the location of the user we need to determine the geographic location of the user's ip address so to do that we have a public ip a npm module we have the node ip locate module so public ip is used to determine the ip address of the device and then ip locate is used to determine the geographic location of the ip address so it's a two step process and then node local storage is a web storage that allows javascript apps to store and access data in the browser with no expiration date so one to get the ip second to get the location of that ip and then this to store it now determining the user location so we import all the modules required which we just talked about 
now variable defined to store the city name of the user so we have sets the value of the specified local storage item so we have the ip locate and public ip so when we receive a nickname ip locate v4 so ip addresses are of two types uh, version 4 and version 6 ipv6 and ipv4 ipv6 is the new version of ip addresses simply because you know we had ip version 4 the usual one that you have seen till now you know like we write 127.0.0.1 or you might have seen 192.168.1 or 0 0.100 something like that so basically the ip addresses where the range was 0 to 255 for each of the four numbers those are the ip version 4 but since there are so billions of users now on the internet worldwide again it's a finite number you can calculate how many ip addresses can be there in the world so ipv6 was introduced which is again devices i think use both there's also like you get the both addresses not sure maybe sometime in the future we might only have ipv6 no ipv4 but it's a slow progress we can't just change things drastically on the internet like that so public ip version 4 dot then once the ip address is resolved we get the ip address we have the callback then we use the ip locate pass in the ip address that we received and then once that promise is resolved we have the callback function with the results the results will have the city which we will stringify the response and then store in the local storage saying user local something like that then what configure the html page to display the location so sense location and payload to display the location in chat window and then we append that so we showed the list of all the messages in the text area with the first the timestamp and then the message so we will also append the location over there so let's see how this goes so public ip node ip locate and load local storage let's install and let's try and run this stop the server first let's import all of them in the app.js you know let's implement this let's console log the results so we will know what we are receiving also let's console log the ip as well stringify the results.city and store it in the local storage now on the client side also we need to send that in the payload okay so what we need to do in this case is since these are callbacks so we have this callback once the ip address is resolved of the user then once the location is resolved we have this callback what we need to do is send the response over here since those are callbacks if we send the chat response over here then it might be the case that there is the chat is emitted first and then we get the ip location so we don't want that also what we will need to do is so in the payload we need to send the message the nickname and the location in that case we will just append so timestamp location nickname and message send it like this timestamp over here now we have a, a city in the response so i'll just say we can keep a pipe symbol over here separate them we have the nickname and then the message so we'll have the timestamp the response the nickname and the message will be emitted in the chat perfect on the client side when we receive the chat let's look at the client side when the chat is received okay so we just take the whole so we just doing it a little differently from the uh, what is shown in the uh, slides we're just sending a string so we just have that data it will just simply be appended into the chat box so since these are callbacks so whatever chat emitting you want to do you should be doing it in also since you know promises can be rejected as well we should have a catch callback as well to catch the in case of rejection so first i'll set this to be a variable now we don't have the location yet so i'll keep it as it is so this is the default one we have the timestamp we have the nickname we have the message now all we need one more thing is the location which we might get since it, these are promises depend on these external modules the ip address the location in case they fail so we need to keep this catch callback as well so even in the catch we are sending the response we are sending the chat but then in this case 
we won't have the location we'll just have so the chat will go on we can also do a console log so we will know in case this callback was called i'll say ip locate catch and uh, say public ip catch so now let's run the server see how it goes port is listening i should refresh this okay let me copy this the location if we get it should be same for both the users i'll say user one perfect so two perfect let's start the chat hello from user one okay washington perfect we have a location wow nice hello from user two perfect we have washington in case you want to mock your location or you want some other location what i would suggest is very simply use the opera browser in the opera browser so opera browser again is very similar to chrome but as they have put in many more features and the ui is a little different but if you open the private or the incognito window in opera in the private window you will have an option for vpn just over here near the address bar if you start the vpn you will have a location let's say from singapore or somewhere from europe so in that case over there you'll have a new ip just for your browser nothing will change in your pc or in your os level only for that particular browser it will uh, have a new ip a new location so you can test it that way so this is working perfectly fine perfect let's see what we got in the ip and in the location what we got in the objects so we got the ip52 dot so this was the same ip for same both the browsers ip locate object gave us the ip address the country country code city washington continent latitude longitude wow time zone postal code okay organization uh, i don't know what this is okay virginia and okay so we got plenty of information which is really really cool just from the ip so this is working for us i want to determine the number of active users present in the group chat so well we are already keeping a list of the users in our array but as you saw in case we have a bug that array might have duplicate values so let's say we want to have the number of users at any given moment the io.sockets.sockets will give the number of active connections so number of active connections is basically the number of users we have so whenever we have a new connection we can simply get the list of all the active users using io.sockets.sockets and then what object.keys does is let's say you have an object with many key value pairs object.keys will take only the keys so let's say you have an object saying x colon 1 so x value 1 y colon 2 y's value is 2 and z colon 3 z's value is 3 or americans as they call it z an object with three properties x y and z what object.keys would do is when we pass in that object will give us an array and the array will have the values x y z you will have all the keys of that object as an array pretty handy the object named object with o capital if you look at its documentation in the mozilla's mdn website the mozilla developer network it has a ton of methods that might be helpful you know when you're playing with data especially in the array objects and all so it will help you a lot so let's see what we get in these io.sockets.sockets so on connection so let's try here sockets dot sockets let's console log this so we will know what we are dealing with let's restart the server and let's try again so that console log of io sockets dot sockets should run when i open the our application in a new window this if i see the console log okay we have a pretty big object so let's try the object dot keys let's see what we get in the object dot keys io dot sockets dot sockets yes so the socket object is pretty big let's rerun the server so we have like two ids okay so this might be what they are storing internally so we have two users so basically two connections and these are like connection ids i refreshed so maybe you know the id is changed now we gotta emit the user list 
and on the client side okay so this will just iterate over all the users and append them to the HTML page the active users okay so we are just sending these socket connection IDs emitting them whenever we have a new nickname instead of users what we will do is I'll say ID list because we already have the user object ID list and uh, I'll emit an ID list as well okay we're already maintaining a user list using uh, this users we're using an array this will do it separately actually you know what should be the case in properly the users array should be like an array of objects where in the key we have the socket connection id and in the value we can store the store an object with user data you know like the user nickname or anything else that you want to store let's say even the location or the ip or anything like that so we should have an object like that uh, that has all the user info the key being the connection the socket connection id kind of thing that we get and in its value we should have a user object with the nickname or the username the ip the location or xyz whatever but okay let's send this as well so we have the div user list okay so now we have an id list event i think the l was capital yep the l is capital and when i receive that so like the active user we will need another box to store that so we have the active users over here just create a new one active ids empty them we'll name it socket id okay and there is this list to i'll say it id list u where do we have this b tag we're doing the same thing over here. I don't know why we're doing it with the JavaScript first and then the jQuery doesn't matter setting it twice basically now okay we did this emitting on the nickname only okay we should also remove them while on the disconnect but okay this is okay for demo purposes so let's run that and see if we get the IDs as well okay now we need to refresh the page to get the new HTML set the nickname so we get both the socket IDs in one go because they were already there. So we get the socket IDs, they're just not fitting. We can adjust that with CSS. Perfect. So we're seeing the socket ID, we're seeing the username. Let's send a message. Enter. Message. Enter. Perfect. One last thing, let's check. So we have this chat box. Okay, chat text. So what we can do is on the on key press event or on key down event if the key is the enter key we can uh, send the chat as well so that can be done simple thing but let's see if we have anything remaining okay so we got this so they've named it user id we called it socket id it's okay fine i hope you enjoyed this session thank you